and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We didn't even plan that one. It's what we always nope. say. No, we just say it so many times. Oh, all right. Yeah. So here we are. Game two, RMU versus Champlain Esports, or Champlain Esports versus RMU because they're on the left side. Either way, Champlain Esports is on the left, RMU is on the right, and here is the picking and banning phase. So, I they've, this is their second time that Champlain has, has uh, banned out this Elise. I definitely think that's a respect ban for RMU. Yeah, uh, chances are that's it. Yeah, uh, since, Elise uh, ban again, makes sense. Elise is a pretty good champion. Mm -hmm. Trundle, that's a respect ban. Yeah, there <laughs> it is. Nautilus ban, makes sense. Nautilus yep, makes sense. Really Current right meta, all that, all that other stuff that we said last and time. And all that jazz. Tanky. tanky uh, Versatile, Nautilus, he's everything. He can do anything he wants. It's fast, it's fun. It's Nautilus. It's, a it's actually slow and kind of boring, but anyway. I mean, he's good, though. Yeah, oh my god, he's so good. <laughs> like, literally, like, when, when Nautilus can beat Darius in a 1v1, there's a problem. He's a little bit too much damage. Um, Gragas ban? Yeah, okay, coming out we... from RMU. I guess yeah, because okay, they right. knew that Champlain plays Gragas a lot, they would rather uh, ban him than allow them to yep. first pick it. And last also, ban, Jin. So also, Jin gets banned. Interesting. That's another respect ban, I'm pretty sure, because you don't usually see Jin get banned. You know, especially, you know, in this... Uh, especially because you have so many people that are still like, oh, Jin is garbage, he's not good at all, but actually he's in a pretty good spot. And from the chat, hashtag Champlain Arachnophobes. That sounds about right. What the heck um, does that mean? Oh. You know, arachnophobes get oh. spiders? Yeah. No, at least this game. I mean, it yeah, looks no, really good, too. It, it it's really, I guess they just don't want to play against uh, <laughs> creepy spider women, you know? And to be honest, I don't blame them. Blue team this game is the Champlain team, and purple team is the RMU team. Definitely. And uh, cutting it really close to the wire here, and first pick Callista. Very ballsy to first pick an AC good. like that, but yep. I guess that's their most comfortable one, and they wanted to make sure that. I mean, they it's get difficult it. to count if you an ADC, you know? Of course. And it's something that that's definitely contested pick. It's, it, it's a solid pick at all. Um, oh my god. It, RMU, first picking out Alistar and Poppy. Disruption yeah. already from their team. That sounds about right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... Alistar is really good, and Poppy was very good last game as well. Of course. And it's just very interesting to, uh, to see what kind of. I mean, first pick, of course, is all this team fight combination. I'm just, I can't wait to see the rest of their team. <laughs> <clears throat> We're gonna see what it builds into. But yeah, speaking of that Poppy though, so last game Poppy was really very much a playmaker. Just kind of set up all these, uh, all these situations for their team to get the kills. Going behind the lines, pushing the car pushing their carry out into the front, stunning up everyone against a wall. It was very very important for these team fights that poppy was who she was the how fast she is and how her dash works is very integral for basically their team setting up these kills and are they gonna pick mundo and they do <clears throat> wow mundo. okay well okay so if you recall like right after the patch that mundo got buffed and was banned henceforth Ugh. mundo um was a really good pick for our jungler if memory had a really bad game and strategy said you know what fine i want to play mundo Lux and mundo carries the game mundo is a it's really true. really powerful jungler he's so big you can't kill him makes sense solid pick it's true mundo um, is still in a very good position now There's absolutely when mundo can 1v3 against the fiddlesticks standing still and still out damage him that's stupid i'm still mad <laughs> i mean anyway i mean you, and you should let bygones be bygones i think it's uh it's just I mean, Mundo. They don't call me bitter for nothing. To be fair, I've seen Zin do the same thing. I think that's just the current meta. It's just people that can do damage while being tanky and healing yeah. themselves. That's just what the game is. Which is fine. I mean, at least they brought back Executioner's Calling, so you can at least counter that. Yeah. Um, Fiora picked top lane. Fiora's a really good champion right now. Um, she's good. Percent health damage. Solid pick. We've I also mean, seen she's... some very big plays coming out of this Fiora too for our uh, for our Champlain team. We've seen some pretty good games, but then again, I'm pretty sure I remember a few times where Fiora just did not work out. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a hard lane. Um, bottom lane, looks like you're gonna be Ash for the ADC. I mean, Ash is solid, you know. Ash That's is good. very solid. Good you CC, don't... some good slow, just all around good, good utility champion. I'm just very surprised. I'm actually very surprised to not see Ash more often. She's very, she's very consistent. Good, no? That's yeah, the... consistent, very good word. She's the, the consistent carry, as they would call it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, she's got a slow. She's got basically her auto attacks give her already a small amount of uh, CC for kiting. 
uh, Swifties being as important as they are to the game, I've seen Swifties Ash has made a comeback, which is very, very season two. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which personally for me, being uh, coming into the game around uh, season one and or two, very nice to see. <laughs> if you think about it, with the Ash Alistair bottom lane, oof, what a blast from the past. Of course, that's, yeah, that's a, a meme from the crypt, as they call it. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, the Nidalee pick in the jungle makes sense. Nidalee's really annoying. Um, over on the Champlain side, we're going to see Tinker Doodle, or, um, well, we're going to see Braum pick for support. Uh, Braum is really good. I love Braum. He's great. And we're going to see Velkaz as the mid laner. That's fantastic. <gasps> Are we going to see Zareth come out? Is he gonna be yeah, Zareth, as, as, as you said, Velkaz, he switched back to Zareth. Zareth was a very important pick last time, uh, last yeah. game, and I really wouldn't be surprised if he picked him again. So now we just wait. That's pretty exciting. Okay, We're gonna wait so... for the timeout. <laughs> gonna... Oh, never mind. <laughs> there we go. And uh, Zarath coming out again. Hopefully, Champlain has learned their lesson from this Velkaz and learned that they need to shut him down early and they need to shut him down often. Make sure that he yeah. can't. In team fights, he's gonna excel. So you probably should shut him down before you start team fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, th that last game that Zarath, nasty guy, real nasty guy, real hard to deal nasty with. Guy. Um, hopefully, Velkaz will make mid lane great again. Um, of course. So, all right, so Champlain team looks pretty solid. Um, I don't see a, a theme emerge immediately. I, I don't know, what do you think? I mean, it's just, it's a solid all around team. We've got Braum, we got Mundo, good tanks. Braum, is, Braum and Mundo, kind of the same thing, to be honest. Um, and they're both kind of <laughs> they're, unkillable. They're pretty much the same person. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, they're pretty much the same champion. Of course, um, I'm, I'm surprised they actually released Braum. When I saw Braum come out, I was just like, really, another Mundo? <laughs> Either way. So, Champlain has a very solid frontline, uh, Braum and Mundo being disruptive. Actually, I take that back. Mundo not being so much disruptive as being a target. So, here's the problem. Here's the, here's the only issue I have with Champlain's team. The last game that we saw was that RMU was very good at focus firing and very good at calling out targets to focus down and CC and basically <gasps> get killed. And that's the pick, because if they try to focus Mundo, they can't kill him. So, and there it is. But here's the thing. They are going to know that. They're going to know that they can't focus down Mundo. Ooh, They're going to know that they can't steep. really waste their stuff on Mundo. So the strength that Mundo has is being that, is being the, the bait for you to focus down. But they're going to know that from the very beginning, and they're going to make sure to CC him, but not necessarily focus him down and go onto the better, squishier targets, like this Fiora, like the Velkaz, and like the, what you call it, the Callista. So while Mundo is very strong against that, against RMU... That's very questionable. <laughs> so, so the question is, will Mundo be Master Bait, or will he just be Diamond Bait? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But <clears> either way, he's, uh, and, you know, <clears throat> on top of that, Mundo still does a good amount of damage. He's still very disruptive. He can still basically hold his own in a fight. So if they don't deal with him in some way, he might be able to break through their lines and do just a good amount of damage to this Nidalee or to the Ash, or, to the, or worse yet, to the Xerath. Uh, bottom lane, solid combo. We're going to see Callista and Braum, both pretty good picks. Um, mm -hmm. Callista is great to just kind of chuck spears in, I should say. Um, whew, Callista's kind of great to um, toss in some spears if need be, um, mm -hmm. especially when that person's stunned. So it's really good to about all at once. Very, very good synergy with Braum there, especially with her ult into Braum's ult. It's, it's great to just of have Callista toss you in and then have your ult knock everybody up. Um, really good in team fights, things like that. Great disruption, top lane. Fiora is a solid pick. She just does everything you really need. And on um, <clears throat> uh, what's his face? And on Vilkas, uh, the Wandering Eye. Uh, I mean, it's a solid pick. Vilkas is good, but interesting. Taking the Clarity, um, opting to have a blue trinket instead of a second summoner spell. Not is that sure Clarity or is that Cleanse? Looks like Cleanse. Is that Cleanse? Oh, that it's funny. Cleanse. Oh, it's Cleanse. Oof. Uh, well, oh, that's rough ball. Oh, that's rough. Well, shoutouts to Aaron for naming the wrong thing. Wait, did he, did he call it a uh, Yeah, he called it Clarity. Um, hashtag wow. report Aaron. Wow. That's a, hashtag Aaron's a feeder. Hashtag bad calls. Hashtag anyway. Bad calls. Well, that's why we're the casters and he's not. Anyway. That's, that's why you don't listen to the, uh, to the comments. <laughs> yes, never. Um, except for when they say that you have buttery voice. Ooh, Hashtags. A, then I take that to heart. Ooh, like beautiful. butter, it goes right to my heart. <laughs> anyway. So um, that Clarity is a very important pick, though, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it's really good. This is Zarath. His Zara stun is very good, and that cleanse is going to be very, very nice. To make sure he can't lane. get his combo off, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, real quick, 10 seconds. Alistair, Poppy, Ash, Italy, Zarath. 
Uh, much more poke heavy than last game with the Nidalee and Zarath both being very good in poking. But that's going to play very well with um, uh, the pick abilities of both Poppy and Alistair. Do kind of similar things there with their dashes in. Um, and then with uh, Ash's arrow and her pretty good um, cutting ability with her slows means that it's going to be fairly well for both of them. Of course. So their poke, though, coming out from uh, from Nidalee and Zerath is something they're going to have to watch out for, especially since they like to play the early game very, like heavily. They're going to have the Champlain team's going to have to be a little bit more careful than they usually are when it comes to these things. Also, they have to be uh, they have to be on the lookout for their team being uh, very, very AP burst uh, dependent as well. So they have to watch out for the fact that they might not even get an opportunity to have the Clister of the Fjord do anything. <laughs> also, we got Green Window, so that's uh, that's very important for me to see. Um, yeah, shoutouts to um, uh, Clarity not coming out of the chat. <laughs> Clarity not coming out of the chat. <laughs> oh, nice. oh, and Strategy takes the Toxic Doctor Mundo skin. Excellent pick. Um, everybody loves. Um, the, you know, the Green Hulk, as it were. Uh, Dr. Mundo, the, the Credible Hulk. Always cites his sources. The Credible Hulk. The Credible Hulk, Toxic Dr. Mundo. That's my favorite skin, I'll be honest. It's Green, Green Mundo. Mundo. It's, it's great. Best, um, it's the best $2 I ever spent in my entire life. Uh, you know, I'll be honest, really. Be um, so we're actually getting a uh, five-minute evade. So Champlain team is invading already. This is going to be interesting. We're seeing yeah, that's, the that's... RMU team realize, oh, wait, there's no one in their jungle. Um... So, so these they're, they're wards, though, it. holy crap! They yeah, really already deep warding. Yeah, that was a that was an invade just a deep ward. That was yeah, and, and that makes sense. It's a solid call. Yeah, but definitely warding the whole side of the top jungle, implying that they might try to have some funny things go on um, when they finally get there. Mm -hmm. But um, those wards you... don't last long. They're just trinket wards, so I mean, oh, they're yeah? well, already <sighs> half over. Honestly, but the same thing coming out from RMU as well. So I guess it's just good to know where your jungler is starting and where they're going. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so, it's good to kind of predict their path. Mm -hmm. Also, the same tactic is coming out <clears> in the top lane. We have Alistar and Ash going top. We have Poppy and Nidalee in the jungle. Trap's already coming out from Nidalee here to go on this Gromp and I think lower his armor measure. Here we go. Okay, so it looks like we're also seeing, once again, top lane swap. We're going to see um, Alistair and Ash take the Krogs camp and then go into lane. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but I believe Tinker is aware of this. Already recalling. I don't know why. So top lane going back. Bottom they... lane. Oh, yeah, they're going to swap. Yeah, they're swapping it up. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Fiora says, no, no, no. Fuck this. <laughs> so, recalls. Yeah, so Go to bottom lane. So, here's the issue. Is that they just spent time switching lanes now. Poppy's already yep. been in a lane. She's already got some farm. Ash has got Krugs already. I mean, uh, it's good a thing very... You should uh, update the uh, scoreboard. Of course. So, that trade is... Might... It has to be beneficial to Champlain. Like, they have to make something out of it. Or yep. make sure they don't lose something, because already they're at a disadvantage when it comes to gold. CS behind already, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, jungle, jungle top. So it's going to be a lot more normal game for them, because, I mean, last game, Champlain had a hard time dealing with all the roaming, all the very good coordination coming out of the RMU team, mm -hmm. which means that likely they're going to be a lot better off just playing it as it were. Of course. So a couple CS behind, but, I mean, you know, like, come on. I of think course, it, it's better. just the, the time it takes to get to the different lanes can oh, be definitely, the, definitely. the difference between getting... It, it's, it, it's certainly, it's a, it's a simple, it's an easy, it's a good play by the RMU team all around. Like, RMU um, already has level 2 in the top lane, and they're still level 1, so if they try and do something oh, here, they're going to be at a disadvantage, and already they want to go in, and here comes Nidalee already! Alistar popping the flash! In. Ooh, knocks, <laughs> knocks her back as opposed to away from the tower. Alistar taking a lot of turret aggro, though. He's mm -hmm. pretty low. Um, that being said, they're all level 3, and... Um, Muffin Man and Brom are both, oh, well, not the level 2, but yep. they were level 1. A so, ding just in time. <laughs> definitely pretty far behind. Um, it's, but it, that could have been bad. Be, be rough. Oh, it could be very, very bad. Good plays on them for not getting uh, poked out. Ooh, and Nidalee is going to engage on the Gromp, but Mundo saw Mundo's going to find him. Ooh, and now she's in a really bad spot. She Looks might be like, able to deal with this. Go help. At the very least, she's going to get Gromp and get out of there, but... Cleavered. Oh, but, oh, but Alistar going they deep, but they might punish him for this! Blood, Taking tower aggro at first, first blood! blood. First Mundo, and the Credible Hulk gets in his first blood. Very, very nice job. So, he used his flash to engage last time, so he was completely uh, defenseless there. That was, I think that was actually one of the few lapses of communication that we've seen coming from RMU. Yeah, really. Because was... Nidalee was fine. She jumped over that- she got- she got a Gromp, jumped over the wall, and was perfectly alright. Just... For, you know, whatever reason, Alistair says, I know, I'll just jump under the turret. Ooh, yeah, that was a little bit of a misplay, but however, first play goes in the way of Champlain, and 
RMU can, you know, is still in a good position here, but I mean, Champlain Mid taking it back. Just get, oh, get pretty hard. So we're gonna see. Um, Zerath is low on mana. I mean, he, he is, his passive isn't free mana, but like. He's low on mana, he's low on health, which means that Velkov is going to get all the free harass that he wants to get off. Nidalee's in mid, though. Nidalee's leaving mid, though. Uh, Mundo, <laughs> <laughs> Mundo is wandering Ooh, around. But Alistar, but, going, really, well, going really hard, but Nidalee... On top lane, Nidalee is coming from behind. She's got low mana, though. Ooh, good thing it was warded. Shout out to warding your lane. Mm -hmm. uh, big ups to wards. Keeping an eye on you. Uh, shout out to Drunk Tom in our chat. Uh, he agrees. He's also taking lots of damage. Having to watch plays like that. Ooh. Ooh, rough. But bottom lane, Fiora's doing very well against the Poppy. Poppy's forced oh. in her tower with low health. She finally got a shield up and, you know, some health back from her passive, but Fiora looking very, very healthy. Ping's coming out. Nidalee wants to go in really hard here, but Velkos is in a very bad position. They're going in really hard. There's the cleanse. That's why you take it. And there it is. And so Velkos. Floats his way away from the lane. But no cause. Staying alive. Staying alive. And the Credible Hulk comes in there for moral support. But nearly in the back line, and she decides against it. But she's going to try and rotate her way bottom lane, and Fiora has to be very careful. And by rotates, I mean hits the B button and leaves. Oh well. And Poppy doing the same thing. But in the top lane here, it's still relatively even. Uh, both teams, I don't think they've really gone in on each other or did any kind of like fake engagement here. The biggest one they had didn't really work out, so I think RMU's a little bit hesitant to try and try to do anything better. And Brahm's saving his mana in case Nidalee comes back up. Okay, so the game's going kind of slow so far. Um, not much has happened. It's only been six minutes, but still. Ooh, and they walk into other, and they walk out. <laughs> and they walk Nothing in. Nothing happens. They, they see each other, and they just say, you know what? Not today. They walk in, and they walk out. They come, they eat, they leave. They come, they eat, they leave. <laughs> Shoutouts to A Bug's Life. Wow, what an old movie. That's an old, uh... Let us know in the chat what your favorite Pixar movie was back in the day. I had to go with Ants. Definitely. That was... There was DreamWorks! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hashtag report Dimitri. No, no, really no, no. please, yeah, don't report me. Movie. I'm really curious. R reported and uh, deported. How nostalgic, oh my god. Remember Bug's Life? No, that's an old one, yeah. Dude, that was, like, really good. I remember back, uh, I went to Disney when I was a little kid, um, once by accident, and, like, I remember I took this, like, Ooh, quiz. put that on hold. character were you? I don't keep talking. I, I got a flick. I, I got a flick from Bugs Life, and I was like, you know, I, I see myself being flicked. I, I see that. Let us know in the chat what, um, uh, favorite Pixar movie you, what character you like. Um, the chat says, um, Asophilus lets us know his favorite Pixar movie is Shrek. <laughs> Easily Shrek. I mean, I gotta agree. Shrek is a masterpiece. Uh -huh. So when I say yes, and that's DreamWorks, you try and report me and deport me. But then when someone else Grand says Shrek, Giza, it's like, oh, well, I agree. Let's just know Raging Bull is his favorite Pixar <laughs> movie. Well, let me say this. Raging Bull could have been a contender. Raging Bull could have been somebody. Oh, I mean, no, that was on the waterfront. I mean, that was the wrong movie. Do you wanna... My Pixar movie is on the waterfront. I mean, come on, Marlon Brando? I mean, do you want to talk about Raging Bull? Alistar in the mid lane. <laughs> Speaking of Raging Bull, Alistar's in the mid lane, walking around, taking CS, walking out of the lane, deciding, you know what? That's good enough for uh, me. Also, the big rotation's coming out here. Ash went bottom lane, and Poppy went back top. <laughs> Austin, 1811, uh, says his favorite Pixar movie is Smash Mouth. <laughs> well, hey, Austin, let me just say you're an all star. Um, <laughs> Much like this <laughs> all star, actually. Your Pixar movie is. Super Mario Brothers 2. <laughs> yeah, movie also, of the year, every year. <laughs> another really good movie, Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, really redefined the genre of video game movie. Um, yeah, definitely much better than, than The Wizard. Much, much better. Um, Asafides, um, besides Shrek, of course, loves... Um, oh no, he says that Bugs Life is the same movie as Seven Samurai. Ooh, I, you know, I haven't actually watched Seven Samurai, and I know Steve is going to yell at me for that. Um, so <laughs> put the one on the list, Steve. Ooh! Fiora all goes out, um, Poppy all goes out, knocks away and they, Mundo. And Mundo Mundo's is out of there. Oh, yeah, and, fine, you can die. Yeah, Mundo's out of there, and Fiora is also out of there. <laughs> Alright, so, two ults, nothing happened. Um, classic plays. So, I gotta be honest, with that last one, I was looking bottom lane, I was like, something's gonna happen. Something has to happen. And then at the <laughs> top, I just see Mundo's little figure cross Ooh, the map. Oh, no, just BM, bro, I'm BMing right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, just constant laugh spam coming out. Ooh. Demoralizing. Pretty, honestly, it's a pretty solid technique. <laughs> Demoralizing. Okay, so in the top lane, um, looking at 
um, C, so just a CS in general. We're gonna see top lane, Poppy's 10 CS lead, jungle's even. Uh, mid lane, like a uh, like 8 CS lead towards uh, Zerath. We're gonna see a huge lead with regards to um, Ash. Ash with like like uh, 30 to 40, so almost like double CS lead out of Callista. Um, that got being 50. said, <laughs> look, well, you know, it, things change. And while well, I was stuttering that sentence, it, it's um, true. They <clears throat> Things change. I mean, you know, things change, we all change. Um, we grow, we die. Uh, Is that Bowie? No, but um, I don't know. I, I can't think of Bowie lyric right now, which is kind of sad, honestly. I love Bowie. I thought you I thought you'd start singing, uh, what, Changes? Is that the name of the song? Ch -ch -ch changes Yeah, something, uh, something from that. Anyway, so, actually, we talk about uh, slow games here. It actually got progressively slower. It's turning into a yeah, no, it's, it's farm actually, fest. It's a slower game. It's Speaking <laughs> of turning and facing the strange... Um, looks like Nidalee is going to be coming in to fight Vel'Koz. The oh, Vel'Koz not looking really good! Oh, and there goes the ult! Oh, oh big flash for Nidalee going really flash. hard for it! And gets the kill! Can't get it, okay, so... So... Very well played by Vel'Koz there. Uh, almost got out. It was it was really hard. It was Nidalee engaging him under his tower, in addition to a Vel'Koz ult being out. That mm -hmm. was pretty well played, I'll give it to him. Um, that being said, they got the kill. Yep, it, it was a good attempt, but ultimately, Nidalee is the best. And <laughs> got the kill. Um, let's see, um... Aranos 2633's favorite Pixar movie is John Wick, and I gotta agree, my favorite Pixar movie has to be Keanu Reeves. Keanu uh, Reeves. The, um, the Witcher 2 is a classic Pixar movie. Oh, top lane! This is it top for lane. Fiora! Gets ran up against the wall, and she's trying really hard at least to get someone with Ooh, her, but... and Fiora gets knocked against the wall. There's not much you can do when you get a... Uh... joke. Anyway, they're gonna take the tower. There's not much you can do when you get uh, rammed against the wall at that, uh, at that at, speed. Uh, 88 miles per hour, what can you say? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I guess that limousine ride has crashed. It was pretty, uh... I don't know, I can't think of any more. Uh, um, we're making fun of Princess Diana, by the way, so in case you... <laughs> Ooh, can, we, can we do that? I don't know if we can do that anymore. <laughs> uh, I couldn't uh, think of any more uh, innuendos for Fiora it. Fiora does her best Princess Diana impression and gets knocked against the wall. Anyway. And there um, it is. I know you were waiting for it. <laughs> oof, you know, some, some days you gotta do it. Yeah, uh, right? I, so, I, the, okay, it's lagging right now. Is your... Is, is everything good right now? Is, is it okay? Because it's, it's lagging. Um, big it's job from Braum bad. blocking the ash hole, but... Um... Yeah, bottom lane, Alistar and Ash going in there using their CC of what they had, but big job from Braum jumping in front of Callista, popping out the sh popping out the big shield, tanking the ult to the face and making sure Callista doesn't get uh, obliterated. Good job, bottom lane. Um, okay, well, well, lag is over. We're all good. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Lag. Speaking of Wonderwall, that's one of my favorite Pixar movies. What? Yeah, Wonderwall. Never seen it? No, I haven't. It's pretty is good. It, is the whole movie just four chords? Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, Simbad in the four chords, you know, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, bottom lane. Let's, let's chat what your favorite Oasis song is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Wonderwall. Let us know why. <laughs> they have other songs. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, Champagne Supernova is almost okay. Maybe. Almost all right. Yeah, it's it's, it's an okay song. Uh, so meanwhile. Uh, so yeah, back, 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 away, back to the game. Yeah, away from <laughs> Pixar, away from <laughs> Oasis, <laughs> and definitely away from uh, from Shrek or anything related to that, and all the Princess Diana jokes. We, we have a game to watch, but the problem is that uh, there's not really much happening. Yeah, not happening right now. Okay, so to get you guys up to speed, um, blue team is the Champlain team, red team is the RMU team, those of who have just joined us. Um, so RMU uh, is actually a fairly famous team. Um, RMU is one of the best um, collegial LCS teams out there. They have like one of the best um, teams for it. And quite literally, um, the owner of the company, Riot Games, has made videos about this team before. Like they've 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 had like spotlights for them. Like, they're a, a pretty big team. Meanwhile, in the jungle, ooh, Zareth almost tried to steal it. Didn't get it. So this is this is a pretty this is a pretty big game for Champlain. I mean, if they can actually ooh, flash goes up for Zareth. Like, if Champlain can can get at least something out of them, that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Um, like a dragon, I, get a dragon, steal yeah, the dragon, and they don't. Who did not steal dragon? I don't know if this team has one dream hack or anything like that, but they've definitely shown. They've been finalists. They've shown very, very good results. Mm -hmm. So, um, CS lead is going to go in the favor of uh, RMU. They have to more gold than the Champlain team. 
Looks damage. like a pretty CS advantage. Well, the ult comes out too on this on this Velkaz. Velkaz taking a bunch of damage, but he's fine. But those creeps, those Ooh, creeps. Velkaz. But he's fine. That dot, like not enough to kill him. But in the meanwhile, <laughs> Callista getting uh, obliterated by this Nidalee. And Nidalee trying to find more, going into this Braum, but Braum pops the shield, gets the speed boost. Asher Ooh, goes out, big jump from Braum, from making sure that he doesn't die. Oh, oh, but Mundo in the sidelines gets stunned. Brombo coming up, not hitting the Nidalee, but he's gonna do the damage. But oh, oh. but Mundo, <laughs> Mundo took a little bit to activate his ult. But uh, ignite, Ooh, uh, ignite doing work against that Mundo ult and the arrow finally sealing sweet. the deal. With ignite, there's not much he can do as Mundo. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Big so, job from Brom, but it, sadly it wasn't so enough. Died. Interesting play. Um, Mundo isn't supposed to die though. I'm not sure what went wrong, but I guess he just didn't hit the right buttons. That's, that's, I, I can say that about every death in League of Legends. Well, you just didn't hit the right button. You, uh, you didn't hit them hard enough either, and they're going really hard into this Alistar, but because of stun off, but I'm not sure what else they can do. Alistar still has his ult, and Ash is right there. The yeah, top I mean, lane, Fior is now Bobby's trying to force a player right now, but yeah, Fior's just trying to safely farm into tower. Fior is now starting to have a very rough time. Yeah, um, suddenly. Yeah, bottom, bottom lane she was doing fine, but as soon as the lanes rotated, Poppy kind of took the advantage the top back. Lane, really? I, I mean, I think they should just keep doing lane swaps if Fiora has a fine time bottom lane, you know? Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Hashtag <laughs> stress. Mm -hmm. But while they're doing that, I'm going after Riptail at 15 minutes, and hopefully gonna get that so they can push down that yeah. mid tower. That's probably it. Mm -hmm. There's no <laughs> contesting that. Pushing power, it looks like for Poppy. Poppy's gonna take it? Yeah, probably a good pick. I mean, Poppy's doing very well against Fiora, and I mean, Fiora doesn't really do that well from behind. I mean, there's just. <sighs> and she's not behind, she's not behind per se, like, she's not egregiously behind, but she is behind a tower, which isn't great for her, and. And it's Poppy. Like, Poppy doing a bunch of work to the Poppy's Fiora, and she tries to dash, but it's too bad because Poppy's got <laughs> everything to counter Fiora. Poppy even Poppy's pops the ult to make sure that she gets. Real quick. Yeah. Fiora pops her ult, and Poppy pops hers, and Poppy's just better. Poppy pops him. Pop him. And Vilka <laughs> surviving another barrage from Zerath in the mid lane. Shout out to alliteration. Let us know your favorite alliteration is in the comments. Oh, but Mundo, Mundo, the counter to Mundo is just being nonstop slowed into oblivion. He's taking a bunch of damage, and that's it. And Vilka's trying to do something, but Cleanse oh, can't save you now, and Zerath gets the kill. X goes down. Brom. Being in a little bit of a bad place here, Callista can't really afford to fight them, and Velkaz is coming back around, looking for more blood. Ooh, big flash from Alistar, knocking them back, but popping in the Braum, trying to get the kill on, or trying to get the kill on Alistar, or at least keep him away, but Callista's already taking a bunch of damage, and Zerath in the back line, just doing- I'm gonna be the just, sacrifice this game. There he goes, Braum goes down. As long as Callista can get away, I'm sure she'll be perfectly fine, but- Yeah, yeah but poor Braum, he did everything humanly in his power, but you know. oh well. You can't what do you? Do yep. What are you going to do? And again, big calls using that uh, that rift herald to get that mid tower down. And Poppy rotating bottom too as well. Maybe they'll get a second tower for this. Yeah. Um. Oof. Oof. So oof. we're seeing really, really good um, rotating, good teamwork. Mm -hmm. just, it's good plays all around from the RMU team. Definitely a very, very good team. Um, yep. I'm impressed. We're seeing around uh, 9,000 to around 10,000 gold advantage in the favor of um, RMU. We're seeing seven kills in their lead, five towers and one dragon, mm -hmm. and a partridge in a pear tree. Of course, naturally. Oof, Zerath. Zerath's already doing a good amount of damage here. He's 1, 0, and 4, so they didn't necessarily shut him down as much as they, would, <laughs> as much as they really wanted to, but even though the Ash Arrow misses, Poppy still goes in and gets the kill on the Kalista. Yeah, that's fine, walks out. Yeah, you don't need the Ash Arrow to kill him, whatever. The Ash Arrow was just extra. But the damage from Zerath is just a lot. It's <laughs> I don't want to say tons of damage again, because I've been saying that a lot. And so is everyone else, but going really hard into the Braum. Braum dies even though he's got the shield up. Zerath going hard trying to get the kill on Alistar, but Alistar is still perfectly fine. Pops the ult, gets the kill on the Velkaz. But Mundo is the only one... Uh, actually, Fiora is up in the top lane, but Mundo is the only one up here in the bottom lane to stop this siege. I don't know what they could do here. They're definitely gonna take this tower and Poppy TP top, and like, she's gonna probably get a kill on this Fiora. Fiora has no mana, so she has no means of fighting this. Escape there, Poppy can just kind of oh get her against the. Oh, uh, yeah, figure she's trying to get her against. The tower that was a good quick. dash, good dash, because she knew the tower was there, and she gets out. She escapes. Uh, Poppy is a, a kind god this game. Of course, uh, a just and merciful being, but in the bottom lane, losing that inhibitor already before the 20 yeah, minute mark. Right, so that hurts. 19 minute inhib down. 
death. That hurts. Yeah, this is not... Okay, so it does not look to be going well for the Champlain team. Uh, so, uh, Mundo isn't doing much. Yeah, he's you zero know... Three, he's 0-3... Wait, no, is that Mundo? He's, he's one, oh, one. sorry. I was looking at Velkaz. Velkaz is even doing less. Either way, Mundo, he's not He's not being really tanky enough. Even when they're all focusing him, he's still kind of... They can get him. Like, it's not... It doesn't look like it's too much of a hassle to try and kill this Mundo. Velkaz is just a... I don't know, he's just unfortunate. It, it's not so much that he's playing poorly, it's just... It's unfortunate that in order for him to do anything, he has to basically stay still. Especially with his ult. And their team is basically punishing that very well. And Poppy and Alistair are in the jungle here, and there's not really much they could do about that. Yeah, I mean, Braum is kind of casually tossing out his uh, cues. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. Yeah, there's not much they could do. <laughs> they should try and punish them for this, though, but I don't think there's... Yeah, so Ash is there, right. and the rest of the team is coming up very quickly. Looks like Muno's gonna recall real quick. Is he recalling? I can't tell. No, he's not. Muno's kind of standing there, just chilling. Mm -hmm. But the damage already on that Belkaz. Belkaz is not Ooh, looking too good at Poppy going in hard and <laughs> from the back line. Alistar going in, Ooh, knocking the Belkaz out of his ult. Doing a lot of damage to the Poppy, but not really being able to seal the deal, and, and Velkaz dies to the Zerath. Oh, I'm right in the middle of him. Flashes, dashes. Oh, and they have to get out of there, but Zerath still hasn't used his ult yet, and he finally Ooh, does. He gets the kill Braum. on Braum. Rest in peace. This is not not looking too hot here. In the mid lane, they really can't do anything to stop this, and they're just kind of yeah, poking out like... the Mundo even. Alistar yeah. going really hard to just apply the pressure so that they can safely take the tower. Arrows going out from Nidalee, and also from Zera. Not necessarily arrows, just beams of light coming out from him and just doing a bunch of damage and picking them off. And Alistar pops Flash, goes in and gets the kill on the Mundo. Not being able to heal from that, and the stun coming up from Poppy, Poppy taking the tower. But Yora gets out of there. Finally gets the kill on Alistar, and that's a double kill for Callista. Now gets utterly destroyed. Mm hmm. You should probably capitalize on this moment, but the rest of the blue team isn't really in any kind of position to do that. And already, Callista taking <laughs> taking a, a good heaping of a uh, laser to the face, and the TP comes out. Oh, Fiora really wants to go hard here, but she's taking way too much damage. If she can get the kill on Nidalee, that'd be a good uh, <laughs> a good consolation prize for losing the base. But ooh, ooh, just ooh. just out of range of the Zerath, but walks away from that. But the ult. You're never out of range for the ult. Gets the kill on oh, Fiora. Oh, Gets it, wants it. Ooh, finally gets the kill, but Zera takes it right back. Braum is in a very bad place here. There's no one to really do damage from, and Ash is just going to kite him up, and Ash gets the kill. But here comes Mundo. Yes. But Mundo also getting kited up, pops the ult, and gets out. No, 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 none of this. Mundo yeah, gets out I, of I'm out of here. But all the oh, meanwhile... Wait, no, no, mind. wait, hold on. What are you doing? No, 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 no. He <laughs> doesn't even care. Zera says, yeah, yeah, you're fine, Ash. Yeah, no, Mundo definitely cannot handle all the CC here. Ooh, Mundo just kind of tossing it. I don't know what's happening anymore. Mundo, please. While well, they're losing the base. Yeah, please, Mundo. And, uh, yeah, Mundo, ooh. please. Mundo's you're you're just going to die. Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, it's Gold. too late. You pop the ult and you pop flash. I'm waiting for Alistar to flash after him, but I guess oh, it's yeah, still on Mundo. cooldown. Mundo walks out because Mundo does. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, really? Was that little bit of harass on Ash really worth it? Yeah, all the lanes are pushing in right now. Top all the lanes are pushing in. You lost one base tower and you're losing another you're one. Three Baron. Sorry, not it. base tower. Nexus tower. You lost one and you're about to lose the other one. And what you got in return was a few little cleavers on Ash. Really? You should have gone back a long time ago, my friend. Alas. Alas. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Hindsight is always 2020. A poor, poor player that struts and frets their hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. This is your, uh, is that Macbeth? Is yeah, that that's, your... that's from Macbeth. Yeah, there's your Macbeth tale, and ooh, very nice shot from the Fiora, dodging <laughs> out the Ash arrow, <laughs> but again, they've proved they don't need the arrow to do anything. The arrow is just completely extra. <laughs> the consolation prize. Yeah, it, 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 it's definitely extra, but already in the backline. Poppy going really hard, but good job from Brom keeping them up, but... Yeah, Poppy just gets in backline real quick, kills Kalista. Yeah. And Velkaz, in a very good position to do a bunch of damage, but what damage? There's none there. Their team is way too tanky at this point for them to actually... No, Callista so quickly. Mm -hmm, exactly, and there's not much they can do here, and they just kill Mundo, and they're going to take the base, and the GG call comes out. Calls go out.
And there it is. And there it is. And that's the final score is 2-0 RMU. All right, well, that game did not go that great uh, for Champlain team. No, that was a, a little bit of a route, <laughs> as they a put it. A lot more stomping than last game. Uh, I mean, so, Tottenham was in the mid-game, but in the late game, things kind of fell apart. Um, Poppy got a lot of pressure. She got a lot of kills. Easy right portal, always very helpful. Um, yeah, just all the poke and the harass, especially with Zerath once again getting big and Italy getting really big that game, too, being 7-1-7. Seven, and seven. Um, I mean, just the RNU team just played very, very well. They definitely... Um, had a lot of outplays here and there, um, despite Alistair ca casually giving first blood. So um, I do want to point out, though, is that uh, I mentioned what Champlain team needed to do in order to do well this game, and that was to shut down the Zerath. And as we could see in Zerath's score, they uh, perfect game. They completely <laughs> ignored my advice there. So, I mean, ignore is probably a strong word. I know there probably wasn't any opportunities to really do it. So, again, the Zerath playing very safe and very well uh nidalee being just basically sh the way she roamed was just very aggressive and it just put pressure on a bunch of lanes even though even when she wasn't there they always had to watch out for her so that's why the game kind of turned into a little bit of a farm fest because both teams didn't want to give up what little advantage they have for a risky play and the problem was though is that with that farming uh rmu just got the better hand of it you had the better uh, better dealings there. They got more gold out of it. They had better rotations. Ash got a bunch of farm. She did perfectly yeah. well. Poppy, mm -hmm. uh, also doing very well in her solo lane. Uh, she had a little bit of a rough time in the early game, but came back against the Fiora and eventually just started killing her in lane. And uh, Alistar, I'm not certain if there was any kind of big things with Alistar. There's a lot of flashing and uh, knocking them up, but then again, that's just pretty much standard pretty Alistar down. fare. So that's mm -hmm. what happens when you uh, play against one. It's just Very, very good engage, and that's mm -hmm. what they did. Poppy exactly. and Alistar an excellent engage for the whole team. Excellent and they engage and their, excellent CC. Oh. Yeah, that's the thing, because they can just engage whenever they wanted to because of all the long-range stuff between all the other champions with Ash's arrow um, for the good CC there to follow up with all of Nidalee's spears, their ass, casual bombs. And I want Very you to, cool. when you look at Champlain's team, what can they engage with? Their biggest form of engage, I feel, <sighs> was Brom. sucking up Braum and throwing them into the enemy team, which, yeah, that's... Yeah, and like, and that's just not what you want to do. No, um, that's not, that's not going to fly. That's not... Yeah, definitely hard to engage with that team from behind. Because um, Fiora's good, but she's just better at dueling as opposed to team fighting. Um, of course. And there and, was not a lot of that happening. And Mundo kind of got uh, shut down, and yeah. Elkaz also... Cleanse it. It was good. I mean, but, you know, I mean, I mean it, 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 it saved his life a few times, but I mean, I, I don't think the summoner spell was the reason why they lost. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm, I'm saying cleanse was cleanse was good to have. It saved your life, but the problem was that even with that, imagine how worse that score would be if you didn't have cleanse. <laughs> yeah, that'd be uh very, very, very rough. Yeah, so, okay, de so definitely, shout out to that Zara. Very, very well yep. played. I have never seen a Zara play that excellently, especially mm -hmm. against Fnatic, who is an incredible player. Fnatic. You've been impressed all season with his excellent plays. Um, of course. Nidalee did very good. Lots of engaging, lots of ganking. Excellent plays out of there. Um, on our team, I mean, it was a rough one, but we had some really good plays too. Um, Braum had some excellent engages. We saw uh, Fiora having some pretty good fights here and there. Um, definitely, for, for a while, she was leading in the game. Um, Velka is doing pretty good, having some pretty sweet jukes here and there. Didn't always make it out, but excellent plays there. Um, Strategy, doing pretty well in Mundo. You know, he did his best. Um, he, he had a hard time without, because his team didn't have a very good engage, so he was kind of the engage, and Mundo isn't exactly an engaged champ. He's more of a walk in and he casually kill them all sort of a thing. So I think with better CC, Mundo would have made a bit more sense, but alas, you know. Alas, um, of course. He did his best, and, and in the game, uh, near the end of the game, um, things just kind of fell apart, and Mundo does not do very well from behind. You know, he can kind of hang around and try to poke them, but ultimately they can kind of brush him off if he's too far behind to make anything come out of it. Of course, um, of course. Yeah, so um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's any much to say about this. It was, uh, yeah, there was mistakes made, but overall, we see what really kind of brings a league team together, though, is that it's not these individual big plays. It's just teamwork. It wasn't necessarily just, you know, it was every player playing well, you know, individually, but their coordination when it came to these yeah. team fights was impeccable. It wasn't just like, you know, 
it wasn't these individual plays where it's like, oh yeah, this is the star player who's uh, doing all this stuff, like who's playing Lee Sin and uh, kicking, you know, dashing in and kicking them and destroying everyone. It was more or less when it came to these team fights, it's like every single person did their job, and that's why they did so well. Yeah, definitely. It was like a well-oiled machine or a well-oiled German machine, pretty much. <laughs> it was very efficient, very brutal. And I mean, and that's a classic technique. I mean, it's just it's mm-hmm. what you got to do. Of course. So, uh, so I, I believe that actually wraps it up for the Champlain season. I have no idea how the season works because no one will explain it to me. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just a, a single elimination. Oh, I, all I right. Think it's it. the, it's it. regionals or playoffs or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, very, very well played. Um, I mean, especially tonight to the um, RMU team. They did great. Of course. Um, yes. Well played Champlain team. You know, they had a hard time, but they also did their best. I was impressed. Excellent of course, there sides. wasn't. Yeah, they had the teamwork. It's just when you get outplayed, you kind of get outplayed. It's not. It's not that you were bad. It's just that they were slightly better, and that happens. This is that's that's what sports are like. Yeah. <laughs> um. And you know, I mean, I, and that's it for the season, I believe. I believe. I, I think this is it for the team, as it were. Um. I don't know if we'll keep playing or not. Um. I. I don't think we're gonna be. Um, casting anymore? I don't know. We'll find out. Ooh, but that's that's really rough know, because that's always that's fun yeah. to do. It's the, I don't know. the fun weekend thing, or you know, randomly on a Wednesday night kind of thing. Um, yeah, well, when they reorganize the game because of spring break, so I mean, I'm fine with it being Wednesday nights. It's just, oh, if it's ten thirty, holy god! All yeah, right. I even said it right. Whew. Yeah, um, right. And <laughs> that's also a thing. Full time student and all that other fun stuff. So. So we'll um, try and keep people posted on what the Champlain yeah, team we'll find what does. Happens. Um, but either way, well played, and it's been nice to watch and see our team kind of grow and develop over the yeah, course. Yeah, it's of, it's like a story. It's yeah, like I a, mean, it, I, I mean, honestly, I've been really impressed with the growth we've seen in top lane out of Tinker Doodle. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. early on, definitely had a really hard time and definitely struggling, and uh, especially as. Um, as a player dealing with a lot of really good teams. I mean, Tinker Doodle has fought against some challengers, some master tier players who are all incredible at the game and for the most part has held his own. Um, of definitely, he, he's had some hard times, certainly, but it's been incredible to watch him grow and over the course of the season get a lot better. I mean, watching him in the early season um, as opposed to watching him now is such a huge difference. I mean, he started having games where he'd get ahead, games on, for example, on Malphite, things like that, where he'd just get really far ahead and do really incredibly well. And it's fantastic to watch that happen. Uh, I mean, I've been very impressed with that player's growth. Um, we've seen some great coordination, some ga- some that, some great games um, coming out of strategy. Our of jungler, course, of he's course. Great. As, a ju- as a jungler, we've seen him grow a little bit too. We've seen some. I remember in the very beginning of the season, we've talked about some controversial picks that he has when it came to the jungle, where some mm-hmm. picks that just didn't work out. And sure enough, uh, like by the mid season, he was picking the same picks, but kind of showing us up a little bit. And uh, yeah, yeah, using those picks that, like for example, Gragas. I remember us saying multiple times that Gragas was just not working. It was just mm-hmm. it was not the jungler to pick, and we've seen him play better junglers. Yeah, but you he's shown us wrong he's uh, he's picked Gragas and he's done it very effectively in certain games he's done very well with basically all the intricacies that Gragas has and it's it's fun to watch it's fun to watch people who uh, start off you're questioning like wait a minute are, are you sure you want to do that and then by the end of it you're like pick Gragas do it mm-hmm. please um, you know, it's, it's always it's entertaining uh, so for the ADC, um, excellent right clicks all around. Good right clicks this season. <laughs> Definitely right clicks when they needed to, and didn't right click when they didn't need to. Um, right clicked the enemies when they wanted to last it, and right clicked the ground when they did not want to, and if they wanted to walk, really good plays out of there. I mean, and we joke, but we, excellent. We, um, we do joke. Um, I mean, excellent overall plays and good synergy with support. Returned, who's made a lot of really good plays this season. Yeah, um, we. This, uh, I've noticed that uh, the one strong suit that I think Champlain has is that our supports and the carries are very their synergies very well. Like yeah, yeah. they kind of we try and pick uh, we as in you know Champlain esports try and uh, pick a good combination for the bottom lane that, has, that synergizes very very well. Not just kind of the they work well together, more like they outstandingly perform together. But I guess I suppose that's just the meta, you know, in a nutshell. But when it comes to plays, I've seen some big, big plays coming out from the bottom lane. When it mm-hmm. comes to that kind of uh, level of synergy, especially when it comes to the when it comes to the Callista and the Alistar, but that is the nature of the champions. Always. But I mean, someone could just pick them and not do good with them. But I mean, hey, we do great. 
Either way, excellent teamwork out there in bottom lane. And finally, last but not least, mid lane, Fnatic. Oh mid lane. my goodness. I gotta say, mid lane has slowly <sighs> become one of my favorite lanes. I, so Every game, I've always looked forward to watching what Fnatic is going to play and how well he's going to do on it. I yeah, have yeah. been blown away by his incredible plays on Yasuo, incredible plays on um, Orianna, and even tonight, plays on Vel'Koz. I, I don't think he's played Vel'Koz all season. He brings that tonight and does, I mean, you know, 1-5, and five, but does very well given the situation. Yeah, yeah, I, I cannot... I absolutely cannot get enough of Orianna. Like I think yeah. Orianna is just a very cool champion that has a lot, a lot of room for different kind of like you know, different kinds of uh, uh, intricacies and styles and things that you can, uh, you know, things that you can do with the champion. Which that's a personal favorite of mine. So watching Orianna, watching all the different stuff is just very, very entertaining. Even if the mm -hmm. team's not doing too hot, Orianna somehow finds a way to set up a big play. The ult is. Uh, again, the ult is the playmaker. That's just that's what makes or breaks a team fight, and or better yet, makes or breaks a gank or you know a counter gank for that matter. You know all that other uh, all that other fun stuff that comes with it. And I love watching him play Oriana, but yeah. oh, def definitely though. I mean, he excellent Yasuo plays, but I think I my favorite game, my favorite game of the entire season is going to have to be Tinker, uh, not Tinker, um, Fnatic playing Rengar in the jungle. One day they said it was it was I think it was like a couple of days. yeah it was it was like two weeks ago or whatever three mm -hmm. weeks um, yeah, yeah. when they had lost the first game it could have been the last game of the season for them and they said you know what fine let's mix it up and Fnatic went in the jungle I think the current jungler went top and they they, they did some swapping around the traditional rules and we saw Rengar jungle on Fnatic and absolutely blew my mind away apparently come to find out he's one of like the best Rengars in NA. Who yeah, knew? that that was the that was so the, suddenly our mid laner who hadn't touched Rengar before in any one of the games picks up Rengar and carries the game. It was incredible to watch. Oh, I'm surprised they didn't do that for their pocket strap for this one. That's I mean a little bit surprising, but I mean yeah, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rengar's in a really bad spot right now. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm, there's definitely better there's definitely better picks, and if you can snash up Mundo, I mean. Yeah, I mean, Mundo, for all, I mean, by all Mundo's means, Mundo's a solid please. pick. He just didn't do a lot on this team. Of course, it, it's just yeah, it's just it's unfortunate. It's that's mm -hmm. what happens. It's not you can't be like, oh, I picked this person. Why didn't I do well? That's not the nature of the game. Yeah, alas. Uh, like again, um, a character or you know a champion or a hero or whatever in any game could be very good, but you can always have a sucky game. You're like, there's so many things that can go wrong that are completely outside your control. That have to do with the enemy. That have to do with your team. That have to do with the uh, simple reaction time things. Like you know, randomly your keyboard can give out. It doesn't matter. It. Uh... Oh, remember that game when the keyboard failed? Yeah, that oh, was Grogan. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that was. And then, and then one time, like the mouse died, and they were like, "Hold on, BRB, real quick." I, I thought they were gonna like go to Staples and buy a new mouse. I was hoping they would, honestly. You would hoping yeah. that they were gonna. <laughs> it would have been funny. Half an hour pause, you know. Hold on, I gotta get. You gotta drive to Staples. Yeah, I gotta gotta get that <laughs> mouse. Um, and and definitely, of course, we couldn't have made it through this long season without the chat. Shout out to the chat. Yeah, um, shout outs for uh, lots of our I, friends. I love show. doing this. We do it at the end of the show. Shout outs to chat for always being there for us, always it's, watching. Yeah, um, um, for X Ray three six two. Shout outs to Walker. Oh my god, yeah, what shout, a guy! Shout outs to always Aaron there. putting up with our bullshit every shout single guy, thing. Aaron. Yeah, every single time being but it's there, abusing him every single week and being like. Oh, oh, Aaron doesn't say anything as he's like, like typing furiously into the chat. Yeah, it, listen to me. Even though there's a chat delay, so realistically we can't, uh, we can't do really deal with that. Uh, shouts for Nick for wanting to be a moderator, and I have no idea if it is because he doesn't talk. Uh, uh, shouts, for, shouts for, uh, shouts to Trevor for making some uh, big memes. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> um, Trevor always being there to put press F to pay respects. Um, not paying respects yet for the the team that that like that actually lost, but you know whatever. The, the one it, time it, 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 press F, just press F. It's fine. It's always there. Shout out to uh, your friends, Paul. Shout out to uh, yeah, all my friends show up. Um, mm -hmm. Comrade Drac, everyone from the team speak who shows up. We love you guys. Thanks for always coming in, um, posting your memes in the chat. Um, Asophides, you're the best. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for always showing up. Uh, let's say Asophides, my friend Steve, doesn't even play League. He just shows up because doesn't That's even awful. play League. Drunk Tom awful doesn't sweet. even play League. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for always being there. Um, ask one four three four. Salty <laughs> Dragon, uh, Chen Fei Ru, um, always there to watch the big praise, as as expected. And, and uh, then, sh shout outs to uh, some people from my production team for school actually oh, yeah. for showing up. Jill, 
yeah, Jill, Brian, anyone else? Uh, I think maybe Ben. I don't know. Other people who uh, who've taken an interest into me yelling, which is, <laughs> which I mean, if people want to watch me do my favorite thing ever, which is yell and complain, who am I to stop them? Um, yeah, it's been one hell of a season. And finally, yeah. shoutouts to everyone on the other teams. All the people, of course, every we played with, everyone we played against, um, all the people who either you know that we played with, or like the the team was played against over the course of the season. Well played to all of you, and everyone who joins in the chat from the other team. You know, everyone of who course. always watches our stream. Apparently, it's not common to have streams. I guess I think we're one of the few schools that do it. So, who oh, knew? that's really that's really weird. Um, oh, yeah. Well, anyway, but yeah, shouts to other teams, and especially there are other teams that start watching the stream because. That warms our heart. It's like, hey, yeah, at least yeah. we're doing something right. Yeah, you know? At least someone's enjoying the game. <laughs> of course. You know, again, again, our first job is uh, entertainers. So Absolutely. if we're being entertaining, then we're doing our job and we're doing it well. So that warms our hearts. Um, I think we forgot one final big shout out as well is to uh, to the Champlain Esports team behind the team. The, oh, yeah, the coach, the um, management, the putting this all together and actually making us do this. <laughs> Noah, Callie, Noah, the team captain, um, Callie, who's one of the people in charge of Champlain Esports, um, and uh, Mike Hamilton, who helped with a lot of production stuff. Um, yeah, definitely a lot to Noah. Noah has put in a lot of time, Noah's the captain, um, for helping get the team together, for motivating them, you know, working um, with the team, uh, helping do analytics for the team afterwards, helping them make picks, talking to them. Definitely, definitely put in a lot of work. Um, he's been, I mean, from what I've seen at the very least, I think he's been a great captain. Um, we've loved having him appear um, for interviews and refusing to say anything because that's all a secret Oh, that's classified. I can't that's say that. That's information always. Um, um, which we, of course, understand, but it's still really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for, yeah, thanks to everyone. Finally, every yeah. other person that we did not mention. And, thank you, and, and and thanks to you, Dimitri. Um, oh for, yeah, uh, being thanks to you, Paul. With me, I've I've had a great time. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I mean, I don't really play League that much. Like, I mean, the, the main reason. I mean, I, I I'm a theater kid. Let's be honest. I, I do theater all the time. I love theater. Um, but to me, like getting to shoutcast is really fun because it's it's a similar kind of feeling, you know, being there talking to everyone, like talking to the audience, as it were, analyzing things, getting to be excited. I mean, I, I really play League so I can keep up with the meta, so I can understand the game and get better at the game so I can be a better shoutcaster. And I do it so I can shoutcast with you, Dimitri. Thank you very much Aww. for being my partner this season. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for being here with me. As, I, uh, as I've seen before, or as I'm sure people who were here for the pregame saw, solo casting is hard work. It's uh, <laughs> a lot of dead air, and dead air is... Uh, wasted time and Absolutely. not entertaining so it's always nice to have someone else here who's uh you know vocal enough to actually talk about things as opposed to uh you know not so and again you know i have a sort of enjoyment for league i i like the different uh, intricacies of the game so it always is uh it's an opportunity for me to kind of boast my knowledge about uh seeing what different teams are going to do and you know yell about it also, it helps you practice public speaking, which is, you know, always good. Always a very good stream. Oh, yeah. Yep, always good. Uh, on the theater <laughs> end, not so much, but you know, <laughs> as it is. So yeah, I think we gotta we gotta wrap it up now. So, so um, Riot Games, let us know if you want us to help uh, shoutcast for DreamHack. We'll fly <laughs> right on down. I mean, we need help, but you know, we oh, yeah. you know, poor uh, college students uh, and all that. Fun and stuff. Everybody, let Riot know that we that we'll shoutcast for them at DreamHack. Um, yeah, I think I think that about wraps up this year. Um, yeah, so this uh, is. I mean, yeah. here we are with this like sentimental goodbye, and then we have a game next week. Like, who knows? Uh, if there is, <laughs> holy frick! <Ooh. laughs> I, I must sound like the biggest tool right now. Yeah, but. really. Oh my god! So shout outs to everyone on the team, um, everyone on the other teams, everyone that's watched this whole way through. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to me and the other caster, whatever his name is. Yep. To <laughs> and to you too. And All right, I'm I'm Paul Turchinets, and I'm Dimitri Kazanecki, and we're Thank gonna you very sign much off. For watching. Yep, signing off. Yep, have a good one, folks, and uh, stay cool. That's the most important thing. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs>